We're back in the messy workshop today. It's Friday video day. Um, and today we're going to talk about steampunk jewelry. About three years ago on eBay, I started seeing this coming up in the listings. The steampunk, steampunk, this and that. I'm like, what are they talking about? I felt so out of the loop. For all I know, it could have been coming up and in vogue longer than that. I don't know. It's about three years ago I started. So I went and I did a Google search and I learned that it was something that I was in love with for years. And it was kind of an extension of found item, uh, jewelry, altered art, collage. And it's so neat because it's kind of like uh, Jules Verne meets a gothic novel or Mad Max with a Victorian twist. Um, it's cold hard and calculating and romantic all at the same time. Um, as applies to jewelry, it's, it's just nothing but cool and it has a lot of movement. So today we're going to explore a little bit about the steampunk type findings that I carry and ones that I like and also some found item things, what you can do to make them steampunky in very little time and get yourself a really neat project. So come on over and let's get to it. So stuff that you can use for steampunk jewelry would be propellers. We carry them in a bunch of finishes and these really truly twirl. Let's see if I can get the edge of it. See? Cool, cool part. I can't get enough of these. Um, also, another thing for steampunk would be old buckles like these. These are old shoe buckles. Cool stuff. Uh, metal hishi. Uh, watch parts. Always, always watch parts and gears. Don't you just love it? I mean, that just is, just, to me, this is jewelry all the time. I think it's an old stopwatch. Spoons. An old eating implements like that. We carry spoons in different sizes. As you can see, you can bend a spoon handle, so there's a lot of possibilities there. Gears. These are some new ones that came in. In fact, in about the next week or so, we are going to have a whole bunch of different size gears and cogs and wheels, both in raw brass and pure copper, that you're going to love playing with. Chain. Lots and lots of chain. Funky, dark, chain. You know, with, with steampunk, dark is better than light, although mixed metals is even better as far as I'm concerned. Um, we had the ring that I made the other week. Maybe you saw that video. Bezels, bezels, bezels. I've got two bezels in here. I used a watch cog for a bezel and then also a bottom 30 millimeter bezel, which we had a piece of old paper out of a dictionary inlaid in that resin dover. Set this down into it and it still spins. So you got a ring. Steampunkers ring. Very cool. Um, I just got this finding in I wanted to show you because it's it's so unique. This is gilding weight brass. That means it's the heavier brass that you can't bend. It almost has a cast look to it. So anytime in my listings you see gilding weight, it means it's heavy and that it's probably flat on the back and it might have florentining or a little bit of this guilloche patterning to the metal, so it's kind of finished, more like a charm. But anyway, I was playing around this morning and I found out that you could do something really cool with this piece, which I kind of figured that when I got it. I found out that you could take this little whirly gig and rivet it on there, and look at this. You got movement. Is that cool or what? And then you could take the little whirly gig and you could put this binding in the middle, which we have on the website. It reminds me a little bit of the gears in the really, really fancy vintage watches that you would find sometimes. I don't know if this is patterned on that. It's not drilled, but there's so many connecting possibilities here for steampunk jewelry. We just have them in the old rose finish right now. But anyway, I found that you could take and embed it inside the whirly gig. There's no glue in this. In steampunking, you do more riveting than you do gluing, although gluing always has its place. So anyway, it would go inside of here. And then you would simply bend the edges over. So I'll show you how I did that. Let me see if I can find my right pliers that I like to use. These ones. I like these really well. They come from Beadsmith. Flat type pliers. I just take it and loop this over a little bit. It's slightly soft. And then just flatten it. And just bring it over just a little bit because it's almost there. 
and just flatten it a little bit. But still leave a little bit of a loop, you know, for some dimension. So, not dementia, dimension. <laughs> With me, it's dementia sometimes. Okay, that snapped a little bit, but it's good. It's all good. You know, I'm learning just like you guys. You know, just because I've been doing this for 22 years doesn't mean that I'm great at everything or that I know everything. When I don't know something, I'll go and try and learn it if I think it's applicable. Or I'll tell you I don't know. Like, don't ask me to solder for you yet. I do know how. Don't ask me to solder for you. Ain't happening. Not yet. You can solder for me. How's that? You make a video. Tell me where it is. I'll go look at yours. But see, there it is. Now it's set. And it's still got the movement. Why? Because we didn't glue it. See, if we glued something in there into this middle, which I might have been tempted to do, we would have lost the movement. But now, we can have a couple of really crazy cool earrings. Just put some ear wires on, and you got some steampunk earrings, and they move. Or great charms. Great charms. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how I actually set that on there because you're thinking, well, with a rivet, how in the world did she do that so that it'll still move? Very carefully. That's how you do it. But I'm going to show you how. And I love this little portable bench block. We sell them on the site. But normally I would put the finished side through the front, but that's not going to work in this case because this is looped up, so I can't do it from the back. I got to do it from the front. So that means I got to get fussy with it. So first I'm going to set it over the top of the rivet and then I'm going to put this on here. You've got just enough left that you can use your um, rivet setter here. And now I'm, I'm, I did it with the concave side. Okay. And I'm going to just tap it lightly. Very lightly. I don't want it all the way down. So it's kind of sort of set. We got the movement there. Okay, because if I put it too hard, it's not going to move anymore. So then I, this is a rivet hammer, which we don't carry on this site yet, but we will soon. I keep saying that, don't I? But anyway, you can get them. But I'm just going to tap this slightly, not with this this side, I done it, just, just lightly. And splay that rivet just a little bit, because I want to make sure it's all the way set and it's not going to pop loose. So how secure is that? Very secure. I think I'll just give it another little ding. But not too hard because I don't want it to set too hard so I won't move. There you go. See? And it's ready. You can put anything you want in there then. But if you glue something here, you're going to lose your movement just so you know that. I don't know. Would this be cool in here? See, here's something else I riveted. You know, I think if I open these up, want to see? Let's try it. We got time. If I open these up, let's see if it'll work. I'm gonna get bold on camera. Normally I kinda like to have a plan, but they're letting us go a little longer on the YouTube video. So let's play together and see if I can get this in here. If not, hey, we tried, right? Looks like yeah. <laughs> Is that gonna be cool or what? So now what we need to do is where are those round nose flies? these. And let's just bend this up and over. Yeah, maybe I'll use this. Maybe I'll put it down with some of these because they're maybe a little bit better. So yeah, if you're looking at this and saying, oh yeah, she's great at that, you know, you'd have to be right. I could do that better. No doubt, dear. No doubt. But see, I'm the, idea, I'm the idea girl. I'm the place to come for the ideas. And then you refine the process. And let me know what you come up with because I'm interested in you. I'm dinging this up bad, so I'm going to quit now. And it's because I know I don't have a lot of time. But I can fix it later. But see, you can see what's going on there. You may even be able to just pound it with the riveting hammer and get it on. I will get that on there later. But what a cool idea. I riveted a few gears together and then stick it inside of there and I have a cool steampunk pendant. Okay, well you might say, well Brenda Sue, what else you got? Well, lots of stuff. Um, this just came in this week. And this is kind of neat. Now I haven't said anything on top of this yet. But what I did is I took this very same finding that I showed you. And I used it, but I, if you'll see here, I took and I bent this out a little bit. Because I wanted to put it on here. You won't be able to, if you put it on flush, you're not going to be able to get a jump jumping through it. So 
very carefully bend it out so that you can still get your connector in. And then I carefully riveted it to the top. I didn't put watch hands on it. I could have because we carry them. But I didn't have any down here, so I didn't. But here's what I thought maybe I would do. Let me get this out of here. I thought maybe I would take a toothpick and put some glue. Uh-huh, you know, no glue in steampunk. Well, yeah, sometimes. Little bit of glue here, just for an ornament. And I thought maybe I'd put it like right here. And then I think I'll stick a little bit of glue under this and put that in the middle. And instead of having a clock, I have a propeller clock. And a time, it can be any time you want. It's like Cinderella or something. But anyway, I think that's what I'm going to do with that. And that will be cool. Now you might say, well, Brenda, what if I have a watch part and I want to make it hang into a charm? What's an easy way to do that? Well, this is what I would do. I would take an eye pin. And then I would take this eye pin and make a little squiggly. And I would do it this way. And again, I'm not the best wire worker, but I got the ideas, right? And then I would grasp it again this way and turn it, you know, maybe one more time. Okay, so I got a nice little funky, very funky spiral there. And then I'm going to look for a hole on this thing that looks viable. Maybe I use this one. And then I'll, pin, I'll bend that down, pull this up, and then pull this over like this. And then I'm going to turn this. If I had a little bit longer eye pin, I would probably do a wrap, but I don't, so this will work. Spin it over the lip a little bit. Now, I had a cool thing to hang. In fact, if you wanted, you might even be able to get something and hang through that. I don't know. But that's an idea for you. Take it, run with it, improve on it. Do what you want. Now here's something that is not steampunk, but it has the elements of steampunk. I made these last week. And you see, I've got my little spirally thing going through there and looped up the back of this to hang this on. But do you see how I connected it? I used a lobster claw clasp. That's an element of steampunk design. The unexpected, taking hardware and then incorporating it into jewelry. And there you go. Steampunk elements, but not really steampunk. I love these, by the way. I might have to keep them. Then, something else that I made, you've probably seen this one before. When I was in Susan Leonard Kasmer's resin class last May, I made this pendant. It has elements of steampunk in it, along with found item. This is a part that we sell on a site that I did the gingerbread patina to. And this I made in her class out of an open back bezel that actually she sells. It's bronze. And then I inlaid my watch parts into the resin over top of a page from an old algebra book. And actually this is wrapped over a piece of a twig. So this is good. The last thing I want to show you is this piece that is really fun. Very steampunk here. I use the Scrabble tiles. I use the propeller. I use gears and cogs. I use garter clips, which we carry at the site. Um, I hooked in this Chatem piece. I use a lot of jump rings, a lot of chain. I use the keychain over here. Very expected, unexpected design. But anyway, I hope this gets your gears and cogs rolling to see what things you can do. We have a lot of things at our site for steampunking at bsuboutiques.com. Come and visit. If you have any questions, let me know, and we'll just keep working on this together. Have a great day.